Ryan, thanks so much for joining me for this Will I Buy It? Making the Edit video. I haven't filmed one of these in a while because there actually wasn't much that I was considering. There were a lot of makeup releases that I just let go by because they weren't innovative or anything different than what I had typically seen out there. But there are a few, like I said, that have caught my attention. So this channel is called Everyday Edit. I'm constantly testing out products and keeping the things that work really, really well. So finding the best of the best for you and then discarding or phasing out items that don't work as well. So I'm constantly evaluating these products and it takes a little bit to even get into my rotation for me to try it out. So either products are sent to me or there are items that are really innovative, really compelling. So I don't buy every new release out there or try every new release. So these are ones that have caught my eye and some that I'm definitely passing on, but I thought they might interest you. So I thought we could have a discussion, leave your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you are considering. So this very first one is intriguing to me, which made me really want to put this video together because I saw this article go by about, uh, it says, why do yours why your beauty's first bespoke lipstick is worth the investment. So I went down and read, of course, the images first is beautiful. I'll put it here for you so you can take a look. It said, what would make a lipstick heirloom worthy? I love heirloom quality items like jewelry, clothing, bags, um, but I don't think of makeup as heirloom because it's often discarded after it's done. So there are a few things that I would consider as heirloom, like a mirror, or a compact that you could refill. But in this case, it's a lipstick case and it's gorgeous. So Peter Phillips, the creative and image director for Dior Makeup said, I wanted to make an object so precious it could be handed down from parent to child like a couture dress or a jewel. And I love this because you can reuse this lipstick case and it says here though, and I don't know, I don't know, it says it has a palette of 12 exclusive shades, easily interchangeable with a quick and very satisfying click. Okay, so that part I get, but then it says the refills will exist indefinitely. So I'm not quite sure what indefinitely means because if you hand down the lipstick and then they stop making it, I mean, it didn't say forever. So that's a hitch here because they have to continually make this lipstick in order for this concept to work because if they stop making the lipstick, then the case is, I guess just a beautiful heirloom that you can't actually use, but it says it will have lipsticks that look like velvet in the tube and feel like satin on the lips. And I wonder if it's more like the, who am I thinking of? Lisa Eldridge makes a beautiful lipstick like that. I wonder if it's that formula. It says it's infused with hibiscus extract and 24 karat gold. It smells faintly of rooibos tea and bergamot. And I love that fragrance. I'm wondering if it's gonna smell like, um, what is the word, what is that one I'm thinking of? Oh gosh. Earl Grey maybe? I'm wondering if that's more the fragrance. It says the shape of the bullet resembles a pearl drop earring, which sounds beautiful. It says only a few thousand Dior Rouge Premier ceramic cases exist on the planet now in the U and in the United States beginning September 1st. I am really interested in this. I don't know the price point. It doesn't say here. Let me know if you know anything else, but it says it's a fingernail thin ceramic cylinder handcrafted by a 160 year old French porcelain house, Maison Bernardo, I think. A feat of engineering that took countless revisions to perfect. So I'm really interested in this one because I love the heritage of this. I love that it is intended to be an heirloom and last pretty much forever. So that's the first really exciting makeup product I've seen come by in a while. We have a launch by Surratt, which is surprising that this even caught my eye because it's pink and lavender, which is not really my thing. I mean, maybe the lavender, but I like that this pink looks very soft. It's a limited edition eye and face palette featuring soft violet and pink shades. It just looked like a beautiful wash of color. And this is in twilight. So it says it has an artistic shadow in glowing pink called Ingenue, uh, an eyeshadow in Vivasante. A revisant, I don't know if that's French or not, a light reflective lilac, and then a blush, which is a cool bright pink. And I think cooler blushes are harder to come by. I don't know why, but it seems like they're harder to come by. So this whole palette just looked really soft and pretty. That is the sort of thing that is catching my eye these days. And as you can see, I barely, like, I don't even have eyeshadow. I 
sorry, I do have eyeshadow, but it's just the, um, what am I wearing? It's the Victoria Beckham in Pecan, and then I am testing out the Milk Makeup uh, Mascara, so that's what I have on, and I'm testing out the Refer, um, why am I doing this? The Refer uh, Eyelash Curler. That's all I have on my eyes. Oh, and a little bit of Victoria Beckham Highlighter. I'm really not wearing eyeshadows that much, but that one looked beautiful. And then this one really caught my eye. So speaking of eyeshadows, again, I have not been interested in eyeshadows. I can't remember the last one that I tried. What is the last eyeshadow I tried? I feel like it's so long ago that I've even put an eyeshadow brush on my eyes. Oh no, wait, it was the um, Isom one, which is very nice, the all matte one. But these look gorgeous. So I love Cladipo products and they are coming out with these enlightened shadows, light empowering eye color quads, premier enriched skincare infused. So skincare infused eyeshadows sound really interesting. It says enriched with new moisturizing bouncy formulation. The primer, did I say premier? Primer, I wanted it to be premier. The primer locks in moisture for eight. It says for eight, they need a space for eight hours. Tone correcting, it refines the shadows finish and extends their wear to 12 hours. Really excited that they have so many offerings here and then they show a little monochromatic finish, a basic finish and an elegant finish as well as a gorgeous finish. They kind of show how they layer the shadows. I'm sure you can use them however you want, but they clearly go through an A, A and B, A, B and C, and then an A plus B plus E plus D. Oh, I just hit the wall. So it, depending on the intensity that you want, yeah, I'm highly considering the cooler tones because warm tones get lost on my skin and you can't really even tell sometimes that I have on makeup. And I guess maybe that's a thing, but I feel like I want to see it a little bit. So I need a little bit of a cooler tone. So I'm loving cool beige, really curious about that one. I am interested in cool brown. They look very similar, but cool brown looks like it has a little bit more red in the, or like a purpley tone maybe and a little bit more mocha in one of the shades. So those are similar, but very different looking. I think they'll look very different on. Uh, let's see, not as interested in the cool rich brown. I don't know if I can wear that magenta shade. Maybe, I love a good green. So I might have to try the green and then the blue. I know who's gonna try this blue. Allison Chase is gonna try this blue, I bet, because she loves blue eyeshadow and that's gonna look stunning on her. I would be interested in that as well. And then the purple. I love purple on brown eyes. So those are the ones that I consider. I'm not sure when they are being released. It keeps saying, like you can look at it online. You can kind of evaluate the colors. And if you click on one, I haven't tried this, but it looks like you can put your image there and see what it looks like, but I don't see it that you can order it. So I don't know the details. If I can find out, I'll see if I can chat with them. I will leave information in the description box below if I found out any, find out anything. But the one that they feature here um, in, I can't, don't know which one this is, but it's like a peachier tone on this model. Skin tone looks gorgeous. It looks very gossamer. It looks very soft and natural. And Clay de Poe is excellent about enhancing the look of the skin. I think they have some of the best skin perfecting powders like their setting powder, their blush is gorgeous. And then also their foundation based products. Of course, you know, I love the concealer. So I have really high expectations for this product, which is both good and bad, but I will definitely be investing in one or two or maybe even three of them. We'll see. Moving on to Dior again. So Dior, I'm confused by what is new from Dior sometimes because they don't change the packaging. Well, they don't change it very much. I can't tell, I can't remember the old packaging on this, but it looks similar because I saw this pop up on Saks and Saks is not the best about indicating what's new. I like to sort, yeah, sort to buy newest so I can see the newest products on top. And I saw this closer to the top and then I wondered, is this new? It doesn't say new, you just have to infer that it is new, but on Sephora it says new. So I'm glad I saw that because I noticed the shade was 33, I think, and I had not seen that shade because I had used, I think, O something, O3 before or O32, I can't, can't remember. But this one has an interesting shade and this is one that I saw on Saks. Okay, there are one, two, three, four, five, six shades. So 033 gray brown for ash brown, browns, no, browns. 
for ash brown brows with neutral undertones. I'm really interested in this because any red or purple will pop out on my eyebrows and look really artificial. So I'm really interested in this gray brown because I'm always asking for asking for gray or green tones in there. So I'm not quite sure what makes this new. I mean, I'm sure it's probably reformulated. Not quite sure, but I do want to try that. So now that I'm sure that it's new, I will be picking one of those up. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try 033 gray brown. I think, I think that's gonna be the best one because dark brown looks still a little bit warm. I, yeah, so for my hair, I don't wanna go too dark with the black on my eyebrows. Although I can see the wisdom in mixing a few, like maybe the gray brown in the front and then the dark brown for the arch. That might be interesting. So I'm definitely gonna pick one, at least one up. And then we've got the Dior blushes. Of course, rosewood, soft rosewood, that's always gonna be a great shade on because it has a little bit of a beigey tone in it, which is why I like rosewood. They have um, 001 pink. Do I have this? I feel like, I feel like I have this or had it. I definitely had 004, the luminous coral. It's a really lovely blush. Innovative blush reacts to the skin's moisture level upon application to deliver a customized rosy effect. I don't know if I need to try this. Let me know, I love blush but I don't know if I need this one. If I'm going to try it, that would be 012 Rosewood. This mahogany shade is interesting. A delicate mahogany. That might be really lovely looking. They have it on the model here. It's maybe like a sun-kissed kind of look. I'm wondering if that's what that look is. That might be really pretty. I don't know, I'm curious about that shade. Okay, then moving on to Okay, this Chanel product. Chanel, let me look it up. I'm so unclear about this product. Chanel Rosy Beige product. The only place I can see it is this on this site, this where you can get products from overseas. And I don't know if it's coming to the US. I am so curious about it. it. Says that it's a cream gel makeup that evens out and illuminates the complexion with a subtle rosy veil. Lightweight formula, easy to blend, easy to blend and leave skin looking smooth, even and luminous. It's in a travel size. It has wax and powders for, and I love that. I love when there's a powder mixed in with a liquid or cream formula. Always looks beautiful, but it says wax and powders for mattifying, and mattifying is what I'm interested in. Mattifying effect and effortless application. Like I'm wondering if it's good for a primer. I don't, I'm really curious. I haven't watched anyone's reviews on this. I know they posted them, but I really try to not watch other people's reviews before I try them because I don't want to be influenced by their perception or impression. So I would definitely pick it up if it came to the US, but I don't know. Um, I did reach out to a rep, but they haven't gotten back to me yet about the answer on that, if it's coming or not. So I don't know. But also the Le Beige travel size, I love that I have medium plus. It's one of the products I've gone through the most ever and repurchased repurchased the most because you've seen the versatility, if you've seen my previous videos, the versatility of this product in that it can fix makeup mishaps. If you haven't seen that, I've shown it a few times, but recently um, in a wear test, I had to use it because I had some issues with my makeup. So love that. So I will definitely pick that up, even though it's a travel size. Next to the Dyson Air Straightener. Let me see what it's actually called. Okay, I saw this demoed on, of course, a channel, one of the channels I watch, it, watch, and they showed how easy it was to use. My hair is straight to begin with, so I used the Dyson Air up to get waves in it, so I'm probably the last person who would want to try that product because I'm not looking for straight hair per se. Although I have to say, one of the reasons I don't wear my hair straight is because it can be a bit, um, oh, what's the word? Wiry when I just let it air dry. It's not like silky straight. And this I think would be a silky straight kind of effect and that you can go from a damp hair versus with a straightening iron, which I was talking to my hairstylist. He said, typically you don't go in with a, um, a flat iron that's it, a flat iron with damp hair because it has the potential to damage the hair. So he said, maybe this is to cut out that step, cutting out the blow dry step of straightening your hair and just going straight to the air straight. So I'm curious about it. I don't think I'm going to purchase it. I think I have to try it before I would consider it because 
The only way I would purchase it is if it could give me some lift at the root and also straighten really quickly from a damp state and get a really silky like movement kind of effect with hair like mine that can tend to go wiry because these highlights, I get asked about the highlights. These are not like highlights they put in. It's because this is gray hair. The lighter strands in here are all of my gray hair and that's how the color adheres. So it's like a natural highlight because the color doesn't take the same to my um, gray hair as it does to the rest of my head. So all we do when I get my hair colored is I have the roots colored and then they pull the color through at the end and that's it. So there's no intentional highlighting here. Where was I going with this? Oh, so the fact is that gray hair can get a little bit wiry. So that's my only thing. If I can get it to like have some movement and be straight, I might be interested. Oh yeah, they also have this, this was not orig originally on my list, but this is really interesting. I know it probably needs some like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Adjusting based on feedback because I heard it's kind of heavy, but this Dyson Zone looks really innovative. So that's why it interests me. The Dyson Zone headphones with air purification um, filters the air for you. So I like that it's not completely touching your face, but I think pollution wise, it might be able to help. It has carbon filters on it, but it also looks heavy. I think I've read that it looks heavy and that it doesn't um, have a, like a seal to the face. So there's potential for things to get in. I don't know. I'm just not sure about it, but I love the idea. Like I love the innovation around this, but I don't think at this time I would buy it. I don't know. I'm tempted. Let me know what you think of this. I think it's innovative. Okay. So we're totally going off the list that I had here because I have a very set list of things I wanted to talk about. And now we're talking about other things. Okay. Back to my list. Okay. So thinking about the Chanel balm, which I don't know if we're, like I said, getting it, but I keep getting this commercial on my YouTube and maybe you are too, but it's by Jones Road and I actually have their powder on it. It's really nice. And that's one of the reasons why I want to try this product. It's the Miracle Balm, but the pictures look shiny. Like the models look shiny. They look healthy. I wonder if it's one of those things that doesn't look amazing on camera, but looks really good in person because they have to use lights to show this and it's just bouncing the light this product, but it might be a really healthy glow, but I don't like glow in the front of my face. I like the glow on the exterior. So if I were going to get it, I keep looking at like literally every day I'm looking at it, like, should I get it? And it's not that it's this super high price point. I mean, it's not inexpensive either, but usually I'll just buy something to try, but I really don't want to purchase things that I'm not going to use. So it's less about the cost and more about the I don't want to add clutter and waste things that I'm not going to use. So starting with Au Natural, the clear balm looks interesting for all over the face. But again, I feel like the Chanel product might be more ideal because it seems more matte with the powders in it versus this that looks more like a balm. And then if I was going to choose a color, the one, the Magic Hour, which is more cool with a but it says it has a silver shimmer because I think bronze is too red for me. I think bronze might look really pretty as a blush. So I'm conflicted on this. I wish they had little like testers that were as small as a, like a lip balm size. That would be really good. I don't know, but I look, literally look at this every day. <laughs> Chanel again. So this UV Essencia, this uh, broad spectrum SPF 50. I love SPF. I love that it's 50 but the active ingredients here look like they are chemical SPF. And I prefer mineral, physical SPF, especially for my dark spots. I don't know if that's a myth or not, but I try to get more physical SPF on my face for those, face for those, and with a tint also. So based on the ingredients, I'm gonna say it does not look like a mineral, physical, SPF, but I like their innovation. It's sourced from the Chanel Open Sky Laboratory in Madagascar and Tahitian Gardein extract helps fortify the moisture barrier and prevent the appearance of signs of aging. So I think SPF, I think that's one of the purposes of it, but I have heard about their Sky Laboratory, which sounds very interesting. And um, I like the science behind it, but I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna pick this one up just because it doesn't have the active ingredients that I look for in SPF. And then we've got these Victoria Beckham 
Satin Kajal liners. I love their eyeliners. I would typically put on gray, but I didn't, didn't even put eyeliner on today. Just wanted to see what this mascara could do. But these colors are very bright. Uh, it's Electric Blueberry, Cherry Blossom, and Sour Apple. So they look pretty, like I love the colors, but I don't think I would wear them. I, they're really fun. I do not have a fun personality. I would not say I'm a fun person, but these are very fun. And so I think if you have a fun personality, this might be really interesting for the summer. If I was going to pick one, it would be blue, the blue electric blueberry. I think that's beautiful. Would be pretty on green, not green eyes. I don't have green eyes. Brown eyes, I was looking at the green. And then I would probably do green next. And then the pink would be my, probably my last choice if I was going to pick anything up, but I don't, I don't think I'm gonna pick anything up. But those are the items that I at least looked at, took a closer look at, um, have got my eye on and decided for some of them, no, I'm gonna completely pass on them. But I would love to know what you're planning on purchasing. I feel like most of us are purchasing less and less makeup than we did in the last couple of years because I remember purchasing all of the new things just because I wanted to try them out. But really I'm trying to stick to what's innovative, what looks different than what's out there. I'm really interested in those products. And like I said, Dyson, always interested in Dyson products. I don't know if I'm gonna pick those other two up, but they are always pretty innovative. But thanks for joining me for this making the edit buy or no buy video. Let me know if you like these. I would love to do them more often, but like I said, I haven't even really been considering makeup lately. I'm more interested in fashion, but makeup is my first love and I will always, always be featuring luxury beauty. So let me know what those things are that you're interested in. But that's it for today's video. So please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.